Hey guys, long time no see, this is D.I.D. Choi. I am back with a few more videos, hopefully, if I get around to editing these in time. But for now, yes, today we're gonna look at doing stems in Logic in a very easy, foolproof, offline way. No more printing stems and waiting for everything to come out. If you use this method and you set up your project or your template using this method, you will get very, very quick stems that are very easy to edit, easy to print, easy to uh, replace if you need to. Definitely use this method. And this only works in, I think, Logic 10.7.5 plus, I think it was. Whichever ones where you can stack the different track stacks together. Without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so in Logic Pro, it doesn't matter what instrument you're using or what kind of thing you're doing. All you have to do is set up your template in this way, okay? Let's say I have a, a string section. I am too lazy to create different patches right now, so pretend this is violin one, two, viola, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so I have five tracks here. Let's say I want to group these into a little subgroup so that uh, later on I can print just the string section. So I've got Command Shift D for bringing up track stacks. I want a summing stack so I can put effects on them if I wanted to. So let's call this the strings stem, and then I'm just going to duplicate it for time's sake. Pretend these are all woodwinds now, and this is actually the wood stem. And let's do another brass stem, okay? So we have strings, woodwinds, brass. Now, one of the biggest issues when you're creating stems is the reverbs. If you use traditional busing techniques where you have just a single reverb for the whole orchestra, stems are not going to work. You gotta have individual reverbs for each of your different stems. So if you're gonna do a, a trumpet one stem and a trumpet two stem, that means you have two different reverbs for trumpet one and trumpet two. You can't have them sharing the same bus. You can still bus reverbs. You don't have to use them as inserts, but you need a new instance of a reverb for each stem. This is something that a lot of people confuse at first, especially if they come from a more pop-based DAW workflow. If you are going to do anything with stem work, even if it is pop, if you're doing a guitar stem, a bass stem, a drum stem, each thing needs its own separated reverb. You can't share the reverbs. Did I nail that in the coffin enough? Okay, so let's create some reverbs. Now let's say I want a nice reverb for our strings here. Now, by default, Logic creates the bus way over there on the side. So in order to control this and actually put this inside the track stack, there are a couple different ways, but the easiest way for me is just to go Control T and it appears on the, on the stack and it basically goes to where your cursor was last or whatever stem you are selecting. Okay, so I'm gonna call this string reverb and you can do whatever you want for the reverb. Let's just put a Valhalla room on here and I'm not even gonna mess with the settings because this is all up to you. I'm just showing you the default routing of how to do this. All right, okay, and we're just gonna send a little bit of reverb. Now make sure that this output is going to your actual track stack so that Everything in here goes to here, right? And you can do whatever kind of bus effects too if you want. I have a little bit of a multi-band compressor, SSL group compressor for some glue, and some tape. Obviously I adjust the settings, but just so you know that you can do this. So now if I collapse the string stem, the reverbs also collapse, you can't see it. It's all good, everything is working. Let's do the same thing for the wood winds. Control T. Now that went into the wrong stem and went up here. All you have to do is drag it down. Usually if you drag it down to the end, sometimes it goes outside the track stack like this. So I like to just put it at the second last and then move this back up if you have OCD like me. Great, I'm just gonna duplicate the reverb here, holding Alt and dragging. Make sure the bus is in the right place. Sometimes it doesn't get routed to the right one. Automatically, usually it does. Logic is smart like that. If you're in any other DAW, like Pro Tools or something, it is not smart. You have to do everything manually, but Logic is smart, which is why I love it. All right, and let's do another reverb for these guys. Whichever like bus number one or two or three or whatever you're using, doesn't matter. If you're making your own template from scratch, I would probably recommend putting everything kind of in a, in a file where you can see where all the numbers are gonna be and plan ahead so that you can actually make your numbers mean something. Otherwise, it's gonna be a big scramble of random bus numbers that you won't be able to keep track of. If you're just doing it for a quick project, that doesn't matter. But if you're doing like a long time template, maybe it'd be nice to do something like that. All right, 
So now I have all these individual stems. Okay, let's just put some MIDI in here. All right, now I have some MIDI in here and things are actually sounding. Okay, here's some Beethoven Ode to Joy. Great, not the best programming, but again, just for our purposes here. All right, so to collapse all of the track stacks, I can hold Alt and press on one of these folders. Now all I have to do is command click. If you shift click, sometimes it includes all the stuff inside of the track stack. So if you want to just do the stem, it's safer to command click. Let's create a cycle range. Let's say uh, all of my stems are gonna start and stop from measure two to measure 10, the start of measure 10 there. All right, command E. So we're going to do cycle range, no normalization. I wish we could turn that off by default. But alas, um, generally I will include volume and pan automation, especially if I've done any kind of mixing. Tempo information, maybe if that helps you, yeah, why not? Including audio tail is gonna make all of your stems slightly different lengths, depending on the reverb. Generally, you wanna just set your cycle range so it's beyond the tail of your reverb. This can give you raw stems if you have any bus processing, but again, that will only be affecting that bus. So if you wanna get rid of your bus processing, you can do that. Otherwise, you know, leave it off. You can set your name. Project name is DID Choi Stemming Vid. And then you can choose the track name, which happens to be String Stem. And you can add any other information if you want here, or you can just type it in here. So it's kind of not very important. Uh, let's add a new folder uh, Stems. Great, export. And just like that, at the speed of offline bouncing, you can export the stems. Let's check them out in the files here. All right, now if you look in my files here, you have three different stems, all named according to the convention that I created, and they are all the same size, which means they're the same length, so they all match. Great, you have stems with reverbs, and if I were to put these in a DAW, they would perfectly match the full mix, which is the most important part of stemming. You want everything to match the full mix. If it sounds different, what's the point of stemming, right? Unless you're doing multi-tracks for mixing, which is a complete different thing. And I wish people actually differentiated those two better. But that's getting beyond me. Uh, just a couple more points before we end this video. I also like, now that Logic can do stacked, track stacks, I might encase all of these into a separate one and call this the orchestra stem, right? Which means if I have another duplicate version of this, which is loading right now, I will be able to have, say, an orchestra stem and a rhythm section stem and a synth stem, you know, whatever I want, maybe. So this is gonna be the synth stem, so on and so forth. What I also like to do sometimes, for example, is I have a string stem, and inside I organize by library. So I have cinematic studio strings. Maybe I have some Spitfire chamber strings. Maybe I have some sample modeling strings, right? So because just the way that I started making my templates way back in the day, I like to organize them by library, but I also want to consolidate them into a single stem sometimes. But sometimes I might also want the option of having separate stems. So as another example, something I might like to do for those cinematic geeks of you out there, you might do a cinematic studio longs and a cinematic studio shorts. So now you can export separate stems for longs and shorts, but if you want to just have a single string stem, because that's what they're asking for, you can also do that. Isn't that brilliant? Logic can do stemming very, very well. It might not be as automatic as Cubase and it might not be as streamlined, but it is still quite good and quite flexible as long as you route everything properly. So I hope this video helped you. This is how you do stemming really quickly in Logic without having to print stems, no more. This has been DID Choi, and I'll see you in the next one.